For his own good, Zhuang Felix needs to leave Atleti. Hell, for everyone involved, it seems. Zhuang Felix should leave Atleti, as things have devolved to a point where it doesn't make sense for anybody anymore. It doesn't make sense for Atleti, as his reactions on the sidelines previously have been a distraction at times. And it certainly doesn't make any sense for Zhuang Felix, who said that he still has love for Atleti, but he just wants to play. Despite an upturn in fortunes lately, we've seen this play out before, always with the same outcome. So he should come back to Benfica, of course. I'm joking, or am I? We'll go over everything in this vid- I'm Adrian, by the way. Rude of me to not introduce myself. And yes, we'll go over everything Zhuang Felix, including how he got himself to the point where a club would pay 124 million euros for him, what's gone wrong at Atleti, all of the contributing factors there, and of course, what could and perhaps should happen. If you like the content and want a few videos per week on a variety of topics within the football world, some opinion pieces, some explainers, and a weekly weekend recap every Monday, then be sure to subscribe and let's dance. Now, of course, there are plenty who have a bit of a warped perception of Zhuang Felix due to only ever seeing him at Atleti. And those people, of course, will say that they don't understand the hype surrounding him. I mean, to be fair, you get that from sporting and Porto supporters as well back in Portugal, but that's okay. <laughs> Those who watched him during Bruno Lage's takeover of Benfica during the 2018-19 season will know just how good he is. I mean, the kid was able to make Harris Seferovic look like a lethal striker at one time. That says it all. But his goal and assist output said a lot as well. Not only that, but the confidence he was playing with, his maturity on the pitch, how he was brave enough to take on that penalty against Eintracht Frankfurt to help secure his hat trick, winning the Golden Boy Award. There was no doubt that he was going to be a fantastic player. Because for me, there are two ways that players can blow up, especially when it comes to attackers. I mean, sure, anyone could always just be playing out of their skin for a while and then have a difficult time reaching those heights once again. I wouldn't rule that out, of course. But the main ways that attackers, I find, can blow up are typically, for strikers in particular, they can be in the right place at the right time due to a mix of good positioning and service from teammates, causing their numbers to get a little more bloated than they should be and cause a false representation of their ability, or they can exhibit incredible technique when it comes to dribbling, vision, passing, and finishing in a multitude of ways, not just tap-ins, essentially. Zhuang Felix absolutely fell on the latter side of things. That's why the, the whole he was overhyped thing doesn't really check out, in my opinion, as his ability was plain to see, and the goals scored in big matches, he set up goals, beat players one-on-one, -on -one. he wasn't just finishing off attacking movements because that was for Seferovic to do. Zhuang Felix was more the second striker that would drift to the left a little bit. He's not a winger. So, you can see why so many teams were interested in an incredibly well-rounded attacker who can finish with his feet and his head, but at Leti, thanks in part to their links to Georges Mendes, I would assume, while also hoping to replace Griezmann, were the ones to bite for 124 million euros, which is just a stupid price for anyone, let's be real. I did a video a couple of years ago on how sometimes transfer fees are a bit unfair for players. They build an unfair expectation when in reality it was simply just the key to a lock, a number that released a player from their previous club, whether through negotiation or reaching a clause. So whenever people downplay performances or what have you because of a fee, I feel like that's a bit unfair as the players don't set the price, their clubs and agents do, and yet they are often used against the players. Instead, that energy should be shifted from judging the player who has no say in the fee to judging the club that committed to paying said fee, you know? These transfer fees, when they are this astronomical, do more harm than good because most use them as a weapon in their judgment of players, not to mention the pressure it puts on the players, especially young ones. It's something they cannot shake. It follows them everywhere. Every time they don't play well, the headline brings their price tag into it. If they're on a barren run of form, they're called, you know, 124 million flop or something like that. It's always brought up. For Zhuang, his overall performances at Atletico Madrid have been mixed. Look, I'm obviously a big fan of his due to what I witnessed at Benfica and what I've seen at Atleti in flashes. You can still see that player is there if he's given a consistent run. I'll get to that later. But I'll be the first to tell you that his performances haven't been anywhere close to perfect, nor has his behavior been near perfect. Humans are complex, injuries and tactics play a role as does this dynamic with Simeone, which we'll get into later. One thing that has really, really haunted Zhuang Felix since joining Atletico Madrid was injuries. 
a ton of them. He spoke last spring to The Athletic about how there was a period of time in which he was actually playing with a broken bone in his foot for six months in 2021. That's not easy. And it goes to show how little we actually know about players who are struggling. We don't know what's going on mentally. We don't know what's happening on the training pitch, the kinds of conversations they've had or don't have with the playing staff, nor if they are playing through an injury. We see maybe 10%. The assumption is that if they're in the squad, they're healthy, but clearly that's not the case. The change from Benfica to Atleti, where he would have gone from having something closer to a free role than anything at Benfica, to constantly running lengths of the pitch to contribute in defense, will no doubt take a toll on a young player who's still growing. As I have banged on about on this channel before, anybody can fall into an injury and re-injury cycle, and they can be difficult to get out of. Thankfully, so far this season, he's been relatively in the clear, which is good. Anyway, last season, João Felix was playing very, very well at the beginning and at moments throughout as he was playing in a role on the ball far more. He would drop back a bit, settle the ball, choose to beat a player on the dribble or spray a pass. He was pulling the strings far more. Despite the perception, last season was his best as far as goal and assist contributions go, with 10 goals and 6 assists from 35 appearances. Nowhere near his best, but better, considering the season was bookended with injuries, COVID messed up his rhythm in the middle, etc. Speaking of rhythm, part of the struggle for plenty of attackers in Simeone systems is a lack of touches. Thomas Lamar spoke of this as he went from an exciting left winger and sometimes attacking midfielder with Monaco to a limp version of himself at Atleti on the wing, and why he wanted to change to a more central position with Atletico. Quote, I wanted to rediscover my style, my way of playing. This change to the middle allows me to play more freely, to be more involved in each phase of the game. I can go left or right, keep the ball and touch it more often, instead of once every 15 minutes on one side. This could be affecting Zhuang as well, as he saw far more of the ball while at Benfica, and during some of his best form at Atleti, he was dropping a bit deeper to get on the ball more. When he's up there isolated, as we just saw against Porto, he's not a striker, he's not used to that, he's not an Olivier Giroud that can just sit there and wait for the ball and hope that he'll get a touch once every five minutes or so. For a while it was working at Atleti, but like most attackers at Atleti these last three to four years, the good performances never last. When you look at Atleti over the years, they never have a player that is competing for the golden boot. That's just not how things pan out under Simeone anymore. This isn't hate for Simeone, this is just a fact. Across all competitions, Zhuang finished second in scoring in his first season, the 2019-20 season. In his second season, third, which was also the season where an Atleti attacker broke the 20-goal ceiling, that being Luis Suarez, with 21 goals across all competitions. The first Atleti attacker to do so since Griezmann scored 21 during the 18-19 season. By the way, the last time an Atleti player scored 30-plus goals, 15-16, a long time ago now, which was also Griezmann. Falcao and Diego Costa are the only other two who have managed that under Simeone in the past, but those numbers are going back 8, 9, soon to be 10 years now. And they're strikers. But anyway, João Felix has always consistently finished second or third in Atleti scoring, despite consistently getting fewer minutes than those around him, most often due to injury, but not this season. Keep in mind, both Zhuang Felix and Simeone have said at times that they don't have a bad relationship. That's their public stance. So this section will be simply looking at what we have seen publicly. Putting pieces together that would perhaps go against their public position on their relationship. So a speculation alert is up here, but Detective Adrian is on the case. Let's investigate and do a speed run of things that would point to a strained relationship. In February of 2021, we started to see frustration on Zhuang's end of things. He, of course, scored that goal against Villarreal, coming off the bench once again, only to look to the bench and put his finger to his lips in a shushing motion. Zhuang later claims it wasn't directed at Simeone, but to Renan Lodi, a good friend of his, who said he wasn't scoring against anyone. Just thought I would clear that up. It's a common misconception. This season, however, there has been plenty of moments. While Zhuang started the season off as a starter, largely down to Griezmann's contract situation needing to be cleared up, after the loss to Real Madrid, he has been a bench boy on the regular. It was in that match where he stormed down the tunnel after being subbed off. 
That same month, he did a video with a Spanish YouTuber, Adri Contreras, of which Adri asked Zhuang who the best coach in the world is, and Zhuang answered with pass. Seeing the video itself speaks volumes as he exhales, looks to someone off camera, and says pass. El mejor entrenador del mundo es... Following that, with Jean Felix playing just three minutes against Sevilla, he was not pictured in a team photo to celebrate Coque's 554 appearances for Atleti, which broke the club record. The assumption was that he left early, was off speaking to the coaching staff. I mean, who knows? Again, not a good look when coupled with everything else. Minutes continued to trickle in during the final moments of matches, with Zhuang looking frustrated during his cameo against Club Brugge and with Angel Correa, another man with limited moments, scoring a brace against Girona, Simeone took the opportunity to leave a thinly veiled message for Zhuang Felix during his press conference after the match, saying, quote, when Correa is angry, he shows it on the pitch. Playing at home against Club Brugge and in need of a goal, Simeone brought on Axel Witzel as his final substitute, leaving Zhuang Felix on the bench where he threw his training bib. Just 24 hours prior, when Simeone was asked about the situation, the Zhuang Felix situation, he said, quote, his numbers are visible to everyone. It is normal for him to be frustrated. If Zhuang does something wrong, it's because I haven't been able to get his talent out of him. That last bit was said a little bit sarcastically from Simeone, by the way, clearly taking exception to people saying it's his fault that such a great talent like Zhuang Felix isn't performing well. Anyway, after the bib throwing, a tweet saying that Zhuang Felix should return to Benfica where he is respected goes out. And Zhuang Felix likes it, getting the Spanish media machine, including good old El Chiringuito, all fired up. Against Real Vallecano, Zhuang is once again on the bench. And despite using just four subs in that match and in need of a goal, Simeone leaves Zhuang Felix on the bench as an unused sub again. Simeone also reiterates that he isn't playing down to his performances, strictly a performance-based matter, and he kept his word. After Zhuang Felix came on against Cadiz, scored twice, nearly scored a third, only for Atleti to lose, he got the start against Porto in Atleti's final Champions League match in which they were fighting for a Europa League place, an important match for sure, less important than, say, the match against Leverkusen prior, where he was another late sub. He didn't get much of the ball in that match against Porto, and he was hauled off after just 60 minutes. To be fair, no one got much of the ball. Atleti were horrible. I think if there is one thing that is consistent with all of this is that we've seen it all before. We've seen the struggles, we've seen the ups that fill Atleti supporters with hope that Zhuang Felix will finally reach his potential, only to be followed by an injury or a loss of form, kind of. The reason why I brought up the goals output from other players earlier was twofold. First, this is something that Simeone has said has been a reason for Zhuang Felix to be benched, saying that once his finishing comes back in training, he will get opportunities. But it kind of feels counterproductive in a sense, as he clearly needs playing time to find his touch again, and there's no use in him sitting on the bench for an entire match, so perhaps a lone move could benefit all parties. And two, like I said, he has always been there or thereabouts when it comes to Atleti's top scorers, yet he is often the most harshly judged at times. Murata is another player who has been harshly judged at Atleti, but lately, Murata is given a pass by some because of everything else he does with the ball and for his teammates. That begs the question of why doesn't Zhuang get that same pass? He's not just a finisher after all, he's far more than that. So while Murata is misfiring, why does he continue to get chances where Zhuang Felix doesn't? For me, it has to come down to a personal thing between himself and Simeone. And this season, much of that friction has been caused by Zhuang Felix, who is seemingly at his wit's end with his situation and the lack of consistent playtime. In my opinion, again, speculation alert, even if he is to go on a decent run of form, the relationship seems to be in a place where Zhuang Felix feels as though he isn't afforded the same leeway or second chances on the pitch that others are. That he's always one mistake away from being on the bench again or getting hauled off in the 50th or 60th minute. Whether that's true or not, I don't think that really matters because in my opinion, the Zhuang Felix at Leti experiment has failed. He's in his fourth season now at the club and he isn't the first attacker to struggle under Simeone as those goal tallies from over the years, which I'll remind you of again on the screen here, would point to. Not many attackers thrive under Simeone these days, not to the levels of Griezmann, Diego Costa and Falcao eight or so years ago. 
Of course, Wong Felix isn't the same kind of player as the latter two, but the fact remains the same. Despite nobody truly thriving under Simeone these days, Zhuang Felix is judged for falling into the same bucket as the rest of the attackers, and that's where the price tag may come into play. I don't know. In my opinion, he has to leave. Bayern allegedly bid for him this past summer, which was turned down, while plenty of others have allegedly been weighing the idea of placing a bid for the unsettled attacker. Whether Atleti will let him go at a major loss remains to be seen. Perhaps a loan move back to Benfica to regain some confidence would help. But when I think about it, while he would be a perfect fit in Schmidt's system, the return to Simeone's system could provide the exact same challenges for him once again. Sometimes, certain players and certain managers are just not a fit. Furthermore, certain approaches are simply not a fit for certain attacking players. I could be wrong about this, and if he goes on to thrive under Simeone, then I will hold my hands up and say I was wrong, just as I always do when I'm wrong about something. And you know what? I'll happily do that, because when Zhuang Felix is in form, he is one of the most enjoyable players to watch, so I hope that I am wrong about this. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new here, and we'll see you later. Ciao.